Hi everyone, welcome to the team determination call for December 3rd. Uh, we are going to be talking today about finishing the year with momentum. But first of all, I have a big shout out since we didn't have a call last um, week. We have a new diamond on the team. Is she here? Oh, she is. Um, Lexi made diamond last Thursday on Thanksgiving and she has been a um, coach for three and a half months. So she like started this business and totally went for it. So she has joined our diamond group and um, just totally rocking it. Oh, thanks, Virginia. <laughs> um, so we're so proud of her. I mean, just to see how fast that she's going, it's just absolutely amazing. So congrats, Lexi. Um, so I'm going to share my screen and we're going to get started on building momentum for 2016. Okay. Can everybody see that? Give me a thumbs up if you can. Perfect. Okay. Finishing the year strong. So how to build momentum um, and push towards 2016. And I know hopefully you watched the video that I posted in the team pages earlier today. Um, it's really easy at this time of year to think oh, 2015, you're like trudging to the finish line and you just want to just slow down. It's really easy to think, okay, January is next month. I want to um, just take a moment to breathe and I'll start January in January and I'll attack my goals then. And that's an easy thought to have, but it's completely false and you shouldn't be thinking that way because in this business, as I'm sure you've seen, when you start working on your business and working your business, you don't actually reap the benefits of the seeds that you're planting, sometimes for 30 or 60 days. So if you stop right now and start building, planting those seeds again in January, you might not actually get to harvest any of them until February or March. So that's why it's important in the last months, November and December, we've been saying, keep planting those seeds, keep talking to people, keep having these conversations because they will continue to harvest into the new year. So um, oh, so the goal is to end the year on a high note and work with focus and determination. That's what we're gonna be talking about today. Ending the year on a high note and working with focus and determination. <clears throat> okay, this kind of goes about what I was just saying. January is the wrong time to get ready for January. Because you know what's going to happen? January is going to get here and you're going to be in an absolute panic. And you're going to be like, okay, it's January. I want to get started. And you're going to have all these people who may want to get started with you with their health and fitness goals. And you're just completely frazzled. But if you plan for January today, you will have a stress feet free January. So you want to leverage the now to get ready for the future. So what does that mean? Be thinking ahead, be intentional with your actions now in December so that they can help grow your business towards January. So here's my tip. Make sure you're running a clean eating challenge or some kind of free challenge in um, before Christmas. And that doesn't mean you'll get people into a paid group in December or anything else, but be adding value to people in some way where they can really connect with you in a group before Christmas. I said these groups are people that you can create relationships with now in December that you can then invite to groups at the end of December so that they can join you in January. So if you're waiting to start something until January, it's going to be too late. Start that now. There's a perfect time between Thanksgiving ending and Christmas where you could fit in some sort of free challenge. It doesn't have to be a clean eating challenge. You can do a, an exercise challenge, a squat challenge, a, a plank challenge a water challenge, just do something where you can get people into a private group where they don't have to pay anything that they can really get to know you. And there's plenty of um, different ideas and scripts and the whole works in the team Google drives for doing this. Uh, and now it's December 3rd, but I want you to set the date for your January group so you can start advertising and inviting to it. So you, it can be on your radar for the future so you know what to plan for. Like I said, if you get to January and you open up your calendar and you think, okay, well, I guess I should figure out what I'm going to do in January, you've waited too long and people want to get started right away in January. Christmas ends and something clicks in people's brains and they are ready to go. So if you're just trying to get your stuff together at the beginning of January, you've waited too long and you may have missed your opportunity because there could be other coaches that 
you know, you, you could have a friend who's got a couple different coaches uh, on their friends list, and there might be somebody who's prepared and ready for a group at the beginning of January, and they'll go to go with that person because that person's ready and they want to start right now. People want to leverage that January 1st, brand new year, clean slate, they want to get started. So don't wait until January to start planning for your January. So here's my call to action or homework for you. Plan your groups for December and January, today or tomorrow, and then do a rough draft of social media posts for the next month. And I don't mean to say that you need to whip out a calendar and have everything exactly set in stone of what you're going to say, but get your calendar out and say, okay, I'm going to do a challenge group on the, let me see on the 4th of January. So on December you know, 29th, I wanna post a, a, an invite on my page, and on December 23rd, I wanna share something about Shakeology, and on December 14th, I wanna talk about the coaching opportunity. Do a rough draft of your social media posts over the next month, so they can all funnel in to January, so that you are having that focus to meet your goals in December and January. So you're working with intentional actions for December that will lead to success for January. Um, this kind of is a little bit off topic, but somebody wanted me to talk a little bit about it. Um, so this is what I did for my business in November, the end of October and November. This is what I started working on, and I was able to hit Success Club 17 in November, which is genuinely a really hard month, but I really focused on connecting with my warm and cold market, and I know Kelly talked about this on her call that she did about having relationships with people, and this is really what I was done. So I made a list of people that I wanted to connect with, people that had maybe at one point had shown interest in one of my clean eating challenges, they were a participant or somebody who had told me like a not right now for um, a challenge group. I made a list, I think there was 30 people on the list and I actually put those 30 people in Evernote because that's what I use to track my people. And I set up reminders every day and every day I would have some sort of interaction with those people, whether I knew them very well or didn't. And I would go to their Facebook page. And that doesn't mean I was sending them messages but I was going to their Facebook page to learn about them and kind of stalk them in a way, learn and comment and be interested and really get to know them. And I did all of that before I invited them to my Facebook event. So my, my goal was to make sure that I was being a friend first, showing that I was interested in them. So with your cold market, make sure you treat them like your warm market and get to know them and comment on their page. And then after you've done that for a little bit, you can message them and start conversations. And I did that every day. Now, does that mean that I commented on people's stuff every day? No, because like I have told another coach on my team, some people don't always post the best stuff and there wasn't really stuff I could comment on. But I did, I went to their page every day. And did it take a little bit of my time? It did, but it paid off because I was able to create good relationships and I was able to hit Success Club 17 in January. So that's something that you could easily do in December. You could really work on warming up your cold and warm market by just being intentional with your actions on Facebook. So that's kind of a little bit of off topic, but it's something you can do to get prepared for December and into um, January. Um, so we need to create specific and achievable goals. So in the month of December, I think everybody needs to simplify and focus. Now is not the time to be doing everything. Now is not the time to be building a blog and trying to be on Pinterest and Instagram and all these different things that look shiny and good and you see that this coach is doing this, so oh, I should do what she's doing too, and you're moving all over the place. Simplify and go back to the basics that have worked for you before. More conversations and less busy work because the holidays are absolutely insanely busy, and the more you try and extend yourself and do too much, the more frazzled and overwhelmed you're gonna be. So simplify and go back to basics in the month of December. Um, and after you've simplified and focused what you're gonna be working on, set two no matter what goals for the month of December. So what's an example of a no matter what goal? Uh, you're gonna hit success club no matter what. You're going to hit a certain income. You're going to hit a circuit, certain rank. You have a number or an idea in your head of how many people you want to help this month. Set something specific that 
No matter what, you're going to hit this goal this month. No matter what, you're going to do to help this many people this month. And then you have to reverse engineer your goal. So it's really easy to say, I'm going to get, get to diamond. That's a goal a lot of people say. You ask coaches, well, what's your goal? I'm, I want to be diamond. Okay. Well, what does being a diamond coach look like? What do you need to do to get to diamond? How many coaches do you need to recruit a month? How many people do you need to help get to Emerald? You really have to reverse engineer it. So <clears throat> let's say your goal is to make $500 in the month of de December. What is that going to take? How many challenge packs is that going to take to sell? How many um, team cycle bonuses will it take if you're an Emerald coach? And how, so how will you have to help your team get to Success Club? Um, how many conversations will you need to have? What will it take? What will that work? You cannot just set the goal of I'm going to hit success club without having actions that will get you there. So reverse engineer your goal. And if you don't know how to reverse engineer your goal or you're not sure what that looks like, contact your upline coach or their upline coach or just keep going up this, the chain until you find somebody who can help you because we all have experience in reverse engineering goals because that's usually how we've gotten to where we are. Uh, this is one of those gut check moments. So do your actions line up with your goals? And it's easy to read that and go, ouch. Like, do my actions line up with my goals? So when you open your computer to work, what do you do first? Are you working with a purpose? Or are you scrolling Facebook and fooling yourself around that you're working and getting distracted by every little shiny thing that comes your way? And I can honestly say I can get sucked into this too. It's very easy to work and not actually be doing stuff that's productive. So in the month of December, make sure that you're actually intentional with your time and really focus and work with a purpose. Don't, it's easy to say, oh, I worked two hours today. Well, of that two hours, were you just kind of scrolling Facebook? And if you're scrolling Facebook to interact with people, that's one thing. But if you're just kind of scrolling, looking for inspiration, you're wasting your time. So really evaluate yourself and see where you need to um, possibly make some changes. Work smarter and not harder. Like I said before, we need to simplify and focus. And I really think it's important before you get started to make a to-do list because, again, if you don't have a to-do list, you're going to be all over the place. And once you make that to-do list, it can really give you that focus. Um, and I heard this particular um, – the stuff I'm about to tell you in a little bit ago, I heard this on a training that I was in for a diamond group, and 80% of our time as coaches should be spent creating magic, meaning working on our own business, connecting with new people, and growing our business. So finding new people to help, finding new coaches, recruiting people, inviting people, running our groups, 80% of our time should be spent doing that. 19% of our time should be spent leading our team. So if you don't have any, a team, then you need to spend 100% of your time um, creating that magic and creating people, creating those relationships and recruiting new customers and coaches. All of your time should be going towards that. And 1% of your time should be problem solving. So this is what that looks like. If you're working 10 hours a week, 8 hours of it should be focused on new business. 1.9 hours should be worked on with your team. And six minutes should be problem solving. So how are you spending your time according to that equation? Are you spending it in the right places? Because I know me personally, I kind of get that equation flip-flop sometimes. And that's really easy to do. But remember, you're in this business for you. And I know we all want to help our teams and help our customers and help everybody. But we got to make sure we're taking care of ourselves and growing our business too. Um. Here's a few of my tips for time management. Um, make sure you're using a planner or something on your phone to keep you organized. I personally use Evernote and I absolutely love it. Um, whether you're using a pen and paper, find a system that works and work it. Because I think if you're not using some sort of system, you're kind of all over the place. Um, utilize your Google Drive so you're organized with your documents and your scripts. And make sure you're tracking your power of three so you can see that you're actually um, making progress and talking to people. Um, set alarms if you have to. And this is something that I was reminded of just today. Um, set your alarms so you make sure you're doing what you need to do. There's a great app that I use called the 3030 app. 
So if you're setting, if you only have an hour to work, set the timer so that, you know, 10 minutes you do this, 10 minutes you do this, 10 minutes you do that. So you're working in a couple different areas and you're working focused and the alarm will tell you when to move on to the next thing. Um, another good tool is to turn off the notifications on Facebook. Um, cause you know where you need to check or to close Facebook when you're doing something else. So you don't get distracted by those shiny things that keep popping up. Um, put your phone in the other room when you're doing your power hour or reading your personal development. There's nothing more distracting when you're trying to read your personal development. You keep hearing your phone going off and you keep thinking, Oh, I should check that. I wonder what that was. And then you need to sell a challenge pack. Like people can wait, they can wait for you. Um, multitask. So do your personal development when you're driving or working out. Obviously you can't read when you're driving or working out, but listen to the national wake up call when you're driving or when you're working out or use those times where you're doing something mindless with an activity that feeds your brain. So that's what I like to do all the time. If you're cleaning, if you're cooking dinner or something like that, pop in some headphones and listen to some personal development. There's so many podcasts or audiobooks that you can read. And it's a good way to get two things done at one time. Um, and my last tip is to be consistent. That's the biggest thing. So um, best practices. Like I said before, find your no matter what that go along with your no matter what goals. And line them up and do them every single day. Every single day, no matter what. So examples, power three, you're going to connect and plant seeds no matter what every single day. You're going to drink your Shakeology and work out no matter what every single day and share that journey. I think it's, there's nothing more important than sharing your journey right now through December to help you into January because people are going to see that you're consistent through the time when most people give up and that is priceless and they might not comment on it or like it today, but I guarantee you you're planting a seed in their brain that you could help them because they see that you're doing it for yourself. So sometimes it's really easy to think that posting a sweaty selfie or something like that on Facebook doesn't matter, but trust me, it does. I get messages from people all the time. Oh, you really inspire me with your stuff on Facebook. It's really inspiring to see you do that. Well, what does that inspiration do for them? It makes them think that they can do it too. So not only share that stuff, but share how you're feeling doing your workouts and throughout the holidays. It's not, you can't just put up a sweaty selfie and say, oh, my workout's done. Share how it makes you feel. Connect with that emotion so that you can connect with the people you're trying to reach. Um, another no matter what is to check in with your groups, um, personal development, and three quality social media posts a day. Like for me, if I was going to do no matter what and do nothing else, those are the things that I would focus on. And you could honestly do those things in an hour, a good power hour, minus your workout. But the other things, power three, Checking with your groups, personal development, and quality social media posts, you could do that in an hour. So through December, when everybody's busy, if you had an hour to focus and work on your no matter what, you could be spot on with those. Oh, and that's all I have. So does anybody have any questions or tips or advice to get through December? Nobody? I'm, this is my first December because I signed up in January. However, um, I just lost my train of thought. Something shiny. <laughs> um, I really think that the, <laughs> I really think that the pers the uh, social media posts are super important, and it's more than just like you said, just sharing something. But I was I was actually looking back at my posts today, kind of um, seeing where I really started opening up because opening yourself up is is it's, it's scary and um, making yourself vulnerable, but people really connect with that. And when you really open yourself up, and I'm not saying you have to share everything, but when you do and you really share those emotions and you're raw yourself, people love that. And that's when your business will really start to flourish. Because when I did, that's when mine really started to flourish. And like Ashley said, those motivational things, people will start to message you. And so sharing your story is really important. Working and doing for December is it's time to really start. I'll say, okay, it's, I'm working and doing for December is it's time to start really making plans for January. Um, I do think so. My personal goal for myself is I want to hit Success Club as soon as possible in December so I can start shifting gears, be able to enjoy the holidays, and start planning for um, January. 
January. So try and do, so if you're trying to run a challenge group and you're doing something like that, I would try and get people, you know, involved with the hammer and chisel or find the people that you need to find and get it done as soon as you can in December so that you can have a little bit of peace through the holidays and you're not panicking at the end of December to hit success club and then focus on January. Um, when are you, who was that that asked? When are you trying to run your challenge group in December? Can you unmute yourself? You cannot. She has bronchitis. Oh, okay. Yeah. You can type it. A, but, um, I, know, I know she's running a water challenge next week. Okay, now that's perfect. To do a free challenge, that's great. And if you're looking for an advice of when to run like a paid challenge so you can hit Success Club in December, um, I would message your coach or you can message me and we could kind of hash out the days where you could make sure you're having enough time to talk to people yet get them engaged. Um, for December and January. Um, is anybody else running a group in December? What date are you starting it? Anybody? I'm, I'm personally not going to run a group in December. I'm doing a water challenge uh, that starts Monday. Are, you doing, are you doing like a regular paid, I'm talking about a paid challenge group, not a free, um, I'm running a free group. Starting, like, yeah, I'm starting my 21 day challenge group on Monday too. And we're going to cut it a little bit short because it runs uh, to the 28th. So we're going to stop it right before Christmas and then. So you're start starting it on the 7th? Yeah. Okay. So will they, is that for prep week? Or uh, what no, are you having week. people order by? Huh? When are you having people order by? Uh, prep you... week is this week already. Oh, okay. So you've already put people in your challenge group. Okay. Yeah. I'm talking about people running a new group that they haven't invited to. Is anybody else running a group in December? Kelly? Um, our team is running a group. Um, we're going to officially start on January 4th, but prep week starts the 28th. So I just didn't want to go without a group in December because I was worried about how are we going to hit success club. So I feel like hopefully that'll be enough past Christmas with prep week just kind of being a loose week, um, but they will have to have their challenge packs ordered by then. I think that that's actually a really good idea. And if I might, I, I like I said, I don't, I wasn't sure if I was going to run one. I always run my challenge groups towards the end of the month anyways, because that way it gives you plenty of time to invite to people and run a free group. So that way you're not panicking to hit success. Cause like if you start your challenge group, you know, on the second of the month, you're, you're gonna have to hit it for the month before. So I'll, I always run mine at the end of the month. So I have all month to find people to fill it. So prep, you should, they would have to order by the 28th and they yep. wouldn't actually be starting until January 4th. Right. Actually, that's a great idea. That's probably what I would do for a challenge group for December because it kind of helps you in both ways. Right. Well, and Casey and I were talking about how in January, people are going to be super motivated. So we want to run back to back groups. So as soon as that group, I don't know what the date would be. Casey, do you remember what we talked about? You could start, a, you could, you could actually start a prep week again on the 18th for new people. I think that's what, Kate, you're still muted, Casey. It's in my backpack. Sorry. Um, yeah, I think we have prep week starting for the second group starting on the 25th of January. Right. So then we can just, you know, do them back to back. I just feel like we're going to have, I want to take advantage of all the people that are really motivated to get started with the new year and not have a bunch of downtime. So we're going to try it. I think that's good. So are you guys going to be running an event through December like normal? I have two events. Well, we haven't started our New Year's one, but we have an event page going for Hammer and Chisel right now too, which I plan to start the same day. I don't know if that's going to be crazy, but we have enough people in our team that are willing to kind of collaborate that we're going to just attempt anyone that wants to do Hammer and Chisel will start on the 4th as well. Sounds good. So um, we have a couple minutes. Um, as long as anybody doesn't have any questions, I'm curious as we think ahead to January 2016 and the whole year of 2016, what's your focus? What is your big goal for 2016? Have you had a chance to think about it? I'd love for everybody to just chime in really quick with their goal is for 2016. Anybody want to volunteer? Kelly. I volunteer. 
Uh, my big goal for next year is Five Star Elite. Awesome. Justinia, what's your big goal? My big goal is to be seven star, but I'm going for Elite. Perfect. Um, Casey, what's your big goal for 2016? I'm just hoping to hit Diamond. She's like, I want my free t-shirt. Yeah. <laughs> I want a free t-shirt. More free t shirt <laughs> Kristen? Um, mine's the same as actually Jacinia. Um, I would like, I haven't decided on a date yet, but big goal is seven star, but I want five star minimum elite next year. Um, and then also, I have not put in my notice yet, but my last day of work will be January 8th. I'm so excited. Awesome. Yay. Um, Danny, what's your goal for 2016? Um, I honestly have not thought that far ahead. Um, okay. I'm, I'm still in survival mode here um, and trying to get more organized. I'm having a real problem with being organized. Okay. Um, I'd love me between me, maybe between me and Kelly, we could have a hash out quick Zoom call sometime to try and help you if you would want. That would be good. Okay, we can talk about that. Um, I'll message you guys. Okay, we have 10 more minutes, so I'm gonna try and get through everybody else. But I wanna help, I don't want you to feel overwhelmed, like I said in my team call a little bit ago. I think the worst part of this business is that it's easy to let it run your life and to feel completely overwhelmed. So um, I want to help you feel less overwhelmed. Um, Bethany. Hey, okay, so Diamond, of course, first. <laughs> Um, and then after that, I haven't really thought much about it. I'm just trying to continue to do what I'm doing and hopefully I'm going to tell the people who, whose goal is diamonds, shoot for a two star. Two star, um, should be the two stars, the new diamond, in my opinion. Um, and I know that sounds big and scary, but mm -hmm. at two star, you get to open up a second business center. Um, it helps your income grow a lot. Um, two star is where I would shoot. Granted, that doesn't mean you need to be a two star in January, but to have an entire year to get to two right. star, I think that was, I think if you are an Emerald coach right now, realistically, I think you could be a two star by that December, 2016. In fact, I was an Emerald coach this January, this last January, and I made two star sometime. I don't know when that was. May, June. So anyway, it's shoot for two star. Kendallin. She's like, I want to deliver my baby. Be happy and healthy. Yeah. Um, I guess um, two star, um, I've, you know, been shooting. Or that's been a goal for a while, but that's uh, still really my main goal for 2016. Um, they have many life-changing events happening this year, so I feel like that's more of a realistic goal for me to stick to right now. So. And, oh, I will say really quick, don't think that your goal has to be a rank, because like last year when I made my goal, my goal was an income goal. Like I had a certain income I wanted to hit, and rank wasn't as important to me. So you might hear us all say, hey, I want to be five star, I want to be 10 star, and you'd be like, that's not what I want. That's okay, everybody's goals are different based on what your why is. So depending on if yours is an income goal, that's great. If yours is, you know, something completely different, no big deal. Lexi, what's your goal? Minimum two star. It's gonna happen. It's gonna happen. For sure. Manaz. Um, I guess now it's two star diamond is my goal. And shoot uh, big, shoot yeah. big. Everybody gets to diamond and they stop and don't yeah. go to two star. And I know a lot of people in my town who really need to lose some weight, but they're still keep telling me no, no, no. So I'm hoping to get through to them. Next yeah, year. you'd be surprised at the people that come out of the woodwork. Not always necessarily in January, because I sometimes think in January people think I got this, I can do this on my own. And then February comes around and they're like, wait, I'm nowhere different than I was in January. Um, I need some help. At least that was my experience last year. Sally. Uh, 
I, I want to uh, develop a team. I, I want to learn to be more confident with having other coaches under me. And I guess, you know, now that I got my Emerald back, that means what, two star, huh? <laughs> I think you can do it. That's what I, I, you, I don't think you were on my call earlier, but I did congratulate you. Sally got her Emerald back oh. today. And it's a really big deal because Sally had actually had two coaches or she had had three coaches and one canceled and two were on the same leg. So she's had two coaches forever, but they were on the wrong leg. So yeah. now she's back to Emerald. So, um, that's awesome. Okay. Jill, what's your goal? Um, I was actually just talking to Justinia about this today. Um, First, I need to hit diamond, but I would love to go for the elite too. So, I guess a lot of you might be hearing. Oh, right? uh, I didn't mean to interrupt you. A lot of you might be hearing um, elite, and you're like, "What the heck is an elite coach?" And I think that I had talked to Amy about having like a, a Zoom call for people who are interested in elite, and I know she's going to talk about it at the retreat. But if it's something that you're wanting to learn more about, talk to your upline coach and they can tell you um, a little bit more about it. Danielle, she's a brand new coach. She's probably overwhelmed by this. I'm very overwhelmed. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. Um, probably just to be Emerald because um, I'm brand new and so that was really my main goal um, and get my coworkers more on board. They're, they're getting there, but I'm slowly stalking them. That's good, that's good. Danielle's super motivated. Camelia, can you type out your answer since you can't talk? And I'll come back and read it, what your goal is. Brittany, what's your goal? Brittany was a new – were you a new Diamond Coach last week? Yes. Oh, and I didn't shout you out. I'm so horrible. I thought it was Here's the week fine. before. And I think Camelia already put hers on the chat, if I can she? pull it up. So. Oh, she wants to be Diamond next year. Awesome. What's your big goal? Um, I, I want to build a pretty good foundation and maybe to start so that I don't, don't lose that diamond status. I just want to steadily bring home about $500 a month since I quit my job when I had my baby. That's good. That's a good one. Virginia, I can't see you, but I know it's you. Can you share your goal with us, Virginia? No, she's not doing it. What about Laura? Ooh, Virginia wants to be five star. Laura, Laura's not there. And I don't know, is this Melanie, I think, Kelly? It's, yeah, it's Melanie. Melanie, it's me. what's your big goal? My big goal is just to continue to sell challenge packs. I haven't really been a coach that long. I know, she, uh, <laughs> she had success club, what, 24 last month? Uh, yeah. <laughs> that, was that was luck. <laughs> No, um, I have to give Melanie a shout out because she is, she, so at night with Melanie, I don't know what time you texted me last night, but Melanie became an Emerald last night, just after 9 PM Pacific standard time. So she missed the cutoff for Emerald. So she's technically an Emerald, but won't rank advance until next Thursday. So, yay. Um, Laura <laughs> said her goal is Emerald. That's awesome. Did I forget anybody? I think I got everybody. Um, but I think, did anybody have any questions about, you know, building that momentum? I know through the holidays, it's easy to get distracted. It's easy to not want to do anything. But if you could just work with focus, connect with people. I mean, basically, that's our business. Just really simplify it and focus it to what you need to do. Because that's all that you need to do. I think it's really easy for us to want to complicate this business. I swear I read a quote once about how this business is a simple business, but we complicate it with all this other stuff. So, and then um, Josh Coates, um, who was on one of our calls once before, and I think he said it on the call, if you haven't talked to and started conversations with people, you haven't earned the right to do a blog post or to, you know, make a video or do this or that. You have to do those first actions of connecting with people before that you, you know, start doing those other things that won't that will help you grow your business, but don't help you right now. Anyways, that's all I've got for today. We're about to get disconnected. Thanks for joining the call, and um, we'll see you next week.